welcome to the Art of Conscious Living TV. Today we're at the Heirloom Expo 2015 in Santa Rosa, California. I'm very pleased to be speaking to Rachel Parent. She's a key note speaker today at the Heirloom. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So what are you speaking about and what exactly do you do here? And Well, you're going to be speaking here at the Heirloom Festival, but what is your forte? What is, what is your points about non-GMO and well, um, I have an organization, and we focus on labeling GMOs. I'm based out of Canada, um, but we really try to empower kids around the world to make a difference in their own lives by making healthier food choices. Um, so right now, in Canada and the U.S., we do not have mandatory GMO labeling, and that's what we've been working towards. So where in Canada are you involved? Are you in uh, British Columbia or Toronto area? I'm based out of Toronto. Toronto. And are you going into the schools and talking to the schools and are they allowing you and are they open to it? Actually, it's been incredible. We've had requests from hundreds and hundreds of schools for me to come speak. Um, and that's actually been a challenge for us because we don't have the resources to go out to all these schools. But that's why right now um, we're creating an education package in which we'll be sending it out to 88 schools across Canada to start off with. Um, and hopefully that will help about 88,000 kids. Um, so that's that's our first goal um, so we're obviously going to need help with that but it's it's in the runs right now um, and yeah schools are very open to it and they're willing to know and kids want this information teachers want this information because these biotech companies are infiltrating the schools and only giving them one side of the story do you think that it's a generational thing where the younger people are more interested in what they're eating and what's going on with the environment where the older people are close to it and they're used to the way it is and they're, they're not as open? Oh, 100%. I mean, I think our generation and the generations from a couple of years before us have become so awakened to this issue and so much more conscious about it and they realize the mistakes from the past and want to create solutions for the future. So how old are you? I'm 16. You're 16 years old? Okay, so when did you start thinking about this uh, non-GMO and how did you come across it and why did you come across it at what age? I was 11 years old. Um, I had to do a project for school and I had no clue what to do it on, but I knew I wanted to do it on something that would impact a lot of people. So I thought, what better than our food system because after all, we all have to eat. So I got more involved in it, found out about GMOs and their health and environmental risks, found out that none of my peers knew what they were. And at that point, I knew I had to take action. So I started my own organization, started speaking, debated Kevin O'Leary, um, did a TEDx talk. It's, it's been an incredible journey. So what do you know about GMO? Obviously, you don't eat GMO, genetically modified organism. But what do you think is the upside of it and the good side or the bad side of it? And is there any good of the GMO industry? As we speak right now, there is no good side. Um, everything that's marketed as being a, a benefit of GMOs is propaganda at this point. Um, there are so many disadvantages of GMO crops, one being for health. It's been related to things like allergies, digestive disorders, organ damage, even things like tumors. And for our environment, it's been related to things like the dying off of our bees and our butterflies, um, soil and water contamination with extra pesticides and herbicides, um, new super weeds and super bugs. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, and this well, is, uh, well, they say that they're, you cannot connect the dots yet. They know that in the lab uh, animals that it's doing that, but they haven't really connected the dots with all these digestive diseases and, and cancer and, and all these disorders in the body are happening to humans and the bees dying off they haven't really connected it it makes logical sense that yes that's happening the neonicotides uh, toxics in the sprays and they're bringing that back to the bee colonies now that's what they're thinking but they haven't really come out and said scientifically that this is what it is so what are your thoughts on that it's been confirmed, at least in Canada, that neonicotinoids uh, have a very strong correlation to the dying off of our bees, and they've done multiple studies now in Canada. Um, and what's happening is uh, GMOs are actually widely used with neonicotinoids, so there's a strong correlation between then GMOs and the dying off of our bees. It's all connected. So at 11 years old, you did a school project, and that tipped your interest right there. 
and now you're very, very passionate about it. So the schools are open to it. And when you go into a school, what is a typical lecture and how do the kids receive you and the children? Are they full of questions and curiosity? And, and what's the experience of that? It's an incredible experience going into schools and um, really learning from them as much as they learn from me. Um, in reality, when I go to schools, they're all my inspiration. Um, and we usually give lectures about not only the issues with GMOs, but the solutions on how they can make changes in their diet and their lifestyle. Um, because it can be hard only hearing the problem without knowing what they can do about it. Um, what we also try and do is really inspire and empower youth to make a difference. Um, so whether they're passionate about GMOs or deforestation or animal cruelty, whatever the issue may be, that they have to take action. Because we live in a world filled with so many issues right now that we can't afford to wait any longer. We need as many people to get on these issues as possible and to start taking action and to find their passion. So that's generally what our lectures look like. So what advice would you have to our listeners? I'd say, um, as Rupert Stevens once said, always leave the earth better than you found it. And I hope every single one of them has that goal in mind. Um, get out there, make a difference, find your passion, start taking action. There's so many little things that you can do, either on a big scale or a small scale, whatever you can do. Voting with your dollar is huge. Um, you can get petitions signed. You can um, go onto your streets and do protests, whatever works. Um, can make a difference. And so that's my advice. Go out there, find your passion, take action. Well, thank you very much for all your awareness and everything you're doing. And at your young, tender age that you're involved. Because most people know the issue or don't want to know about the issue. And there's a lot of inaction. So thank you for your passion. Thank you so much.